All right, guys, as some of you know, I've been working on putting together an updated platform for 2019. And so as part of that, you know, I need to evaluate some new things. So I have that other video about those other motors I just got, and I've been running them, and they're great. But I'm really excited to talk about these flywoos. So the packaging is nice and simple. This sounds a little silly because, you know, Packaging is packaging, right? Send them to me in a box, save a couple bucks. Problem is, if you send motors in something like a bag, they quite potentially get damaged in transit. A box is great. Now, I've seen some other manufacturers, you know, having plastic packaging. Um, even, I even saw one getting into like an aluminum box packaging, but I really have to question the value there. I mean, how much does that increase the product cost? So, to have a cardboard box is, I think, reasonable. I think that's going to protect these things enough without going overboard, right? So when you open the box, you get this, you know, they got a little piece of foam on top, and you get, the, I laughed at this, you get some wipes, which is not something I've ever gotten with a motor before. But the second you take this thing out of the packaging, you start to realize why. I mean, look at that. Look how pretty those things are. This is called titanium, as far as the color goes. What I've got here is what they call their NIN 2207 2750 KV motor. Now, NIN is short for Ninja. I don't know why they wouldn't just call it Ninja. Um, it is what it is. But this motor potentially has some really... Well, I'm not going to say some. It has a really neat feature that caught my eye, and which is why I would pick these. So what I'm going to do here to start this off is I'm just going to take this motor out of the bottom of the bell here. Now you can see when you look at the bottom of this, these are running a 16 by 16 mounting pattern, which is fine. 16 by 19 gives you a little flexibility for some of the older stuff, but I I really don't find it necessary. I even think that I prefer the 16 by 16 just for uniformity, right? So I went ahead and took that motor screw out. You can see the bearing here. Now these are running nine millimeter bearings. These are always a little tough to pull off, you know? Ugh. Tell you what, see if I can do something without damaging anything. Someone's gonna scream at me for this. Ugh. There we go. This is your other 9mm bearing. Um, this is, again, a 7mm high by 22mm wide stator. You can see that this is single-strand windings, and that they've taken a little bit of attention to everything, uh, including the wiring. You know, this is something that, that I've only ever seen on one other motor. Actually, have I even seen it on one? And that's this piece of the base going across here so that your shrink wrap and all doesn't end up binding up the top of your bell. Now the bell looks really well constructed. I mean, that's something that everybody says anymore. Very few people say, you know, this looks like a turd. But it is very, very clean. And I'm going to be honest. Okay, there we go. I was going to say, I don't even see any, I don't even see any balancing compound, but there's some. Now the one really neat feature that caught my eye with these... Down in here, let's see if I can even get that out of there. Uh huh. All right. You guys see that green thing in there? That is actually a rubber damper. AKA, this is almost like having this soft mounted over your bearings. Because a lot of these, uh, a lot of other manufacturers, they put a motor bell in here. And that bell sits right on top of the bearings. And so any vibrations that are coming off this bell travel through the stator, through the base, and inevitably add a little bit of vibration to your flight controller as it's flying. But these guys have added a little rubber damper here, then a washer. Ooh, that's really tight. 
in the past these usually just sort of slip on, but this is uh that's actually really, really tight. First time I've ever had that happen. There we go. So anyway, you can see what the tolerances are on these flying motors, right? Really impressive. But it doesn't even reflect the light well up into the camera. Really, really neat. I really dig a lot of the production features and the design features that I've seen employed in this. Go ahead and stick this screw back in here. Remember when you put these screws back in your base, they're not supposed to go tight, just snug. Now the screw that goes in the base here even has a stamping, a hardness stamping of 10.5 on it. So they're not using aluminum, they're not using soft metal here. There we go. When you put these in, you just want them to be snug. You don't want them to be tight because you want your bell to spin freely. The screw should ideally spin with it. Now, actually, I even tried to torque that a little bit. Nice. The way this is designed, you actually can't over-tighten the screw. All right. Really liking these. So the last thing is the wire. Most motor wires, in fact, every motor wire I've ever gotten on any motor comes with 20 gauge wire. These come with 18 gauge wire. So this is giving every impression that these are going to be power hungry motors. But hopefully to go with that, we have just powerful motors. So I picked these up for about $22 a piece. That was before shipping. Uh, shipping cost me about $15, I want to say, because these ship directly from overseas, uh, somewhere in China. The, the bells and the base are made of 7075 aluminum, but they are electroplated with, you know, I don't know if this is just nickel chrome or what it is, but man, it's attractive. I even kind of like the, the wheel design on these. These almost remind me of, you know, like pimp wheels. They're also sporting a titanium alloy shaft, and then N52H magnets, so that's pretty standard. These are high temp uh, to 220 degrees Celsius. The bearings, I mentioned they're 9 millimeter bearings, they're 4x4x9 four by four by NSKs, and they, they are smooth. I'll tell you, these things are not notchy or coggy, so these should be really smooth in flight. The motors are coming in at 33 and a half grams a piece, so not too bad. They're a little heavy, I want to say, but man, when you start to, to fondle these things and really take a look at how they're put together, you sort of understand why. Last, they come with the obligatory mounting screws and a prop and a nylock prop nut. Now these, just like a lot of other motors now, are coming with a short profile nylock nut, so Personally, I prefer the full height, but it's not that big a deal. Last, these are rated for a maximum current of about 55, 56 amps. So they will take quite a bit of power if you really want or can even throw that at them. So there we have it. I'll be getting these on a build real soon onto uh, the sister glide. And once I've got some flights underway, I'll follow up with some actual real-world thoughts. Thanks a lot, guys. Happy crashing.